So can you give us your best snapshot of the, the sort of this period, the last uh, 10, 20 years, and, and what's happening right now? Yeah, well, uh, the last uh, almost 20 years, we have some of the best observations of sea level that we've ever had uh, from satellite observations. And these show us very clearly that sea level is rising at about three millimeters per year on average. And uh, this is a really remarkable observation, I think, because of how actually, actually because of how steady it is. Um, if you look at a lot of other climate indicators like surface temperature uh, and things like that, then one year they're high, another year they're low. They have huge year-to-year -year variations. Uh, and sea level, we see some of that, but really it's very, very steady. It's probably the most steady clear indicator of how much we're changing our climate on a global scale. Um, it integrates together, it adds together uh, the heat that's absorbed from uh, the planetary imbalance, that is how much extra energy we're trapping with the greenhouse gases. That energy, most of it goes in the ocean, warms it up, causes sea level rise because of thermal expansion. Um, and then the rest is the ice sheets, the glaciers, uh, the land ice that's melted and lost back to the ocean. Because you're kind of adding these things together and, and averaging them over time a little bit in the, sea level, in the sea level estimate, it's really a very steady indicator of how the whole planet's climate is changing. Um, so in that regard, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I had a conversation with um, uh, John Church recently. We had a, a little workshop at JPL. Uh, and John Church came to visit us, and, and I asked him, you know, can we think of modern-day sea level rise as essentially irreversible? At least in our lifetimes, uh, every centimeter we add to sea level uh, through global warming is something we're not going to get back. So, in a way, it's really a very poignant indicator of just how fast and how far we're forcing our climate out of balance. Now, there, there are some folks who um, count themselves as skeptics on the dangerous side of warming who say there's really no difference between the rate of sea level rise now and, and what's happened since the, uh, you know, all through the period since the Little Ice Age um, came to an end. Is there some way to discriminate a, a, a ramp up or a difference? Right. Actually, um, a very recent research suggests that um, in the last 2,000 years, the rate that we're seeing right now is dramatically larger. The last 2,000 years of sea level has been remarkably steady, uh, and then at the very end of the record you see this uh, huge increase in the rate of sea level rise. So we are just now beginning to put together what you might call a sea level hockey stick, uh, much like the infamous or famous uh, hockey stick for global surface temperature. And as we look back over the last two, three thousand years, we really see a very steady, very stable picture of global sea level. Uh, and that's in stark contrast to what's happening right now. Uh, there was a paper by, um, I can't remember the, the, um, the reference of him, but this was just in the last couple of months. Yeah. Uh, and they know this from looking at uh, salt marsh shape. Uh, essentially, they find a salt marsh in a place where, for instance, since the land is uh, sinking very rapidly because of processes that happened at the end of the last ice age. Oh, I remember that paper, right? Yeah. Right, and then uh, and then they they can map how the rate of sea levels changed over the last couple thousand years. When they look at it, you you see this this hockey stick, effectively. It's kind of interesting to me how some the work that relates to sea level extends from ice sheets to coral reefs. And the paleo work often is looking at coral reef uh, patterns over time. And uh, there, was, there was work both in Florida and then more recently more in the Caribbean that seemed to start to um, nail down some interesting, actually really dramatic changes in sea level the last time the planet was warmer than it is now in, in a big way uh, during the Eemian, that, that last warm-up be be before the last ice age. And and it shows four to six meters, not just a rise, which is unremarkable. You kind of know that, but a lot of fluctuation too. What? What? Any idea how that relates to what may come? Yeah, well, this is a really fascinating uh, study and and set of work. Uh, the idea that during these warm periods, when we kind of think of the climate as more stable, uh, in fact, it hasn't been. And there have been huge changes. 
uh, and the amount of ice sheet loss and sea level rise. Uh, so what causes these? Th- these are still open questions, I think, and they, they uh, certainly this was a finding that, that generated more question than, questions than answers. Um, because if the sea, if the uh, ice sheets can uh, change by several meters during these warm and cool period, during these relatively warm periods, uh, then you know we could be in for a pretty wild ride here as we as we uh, drive them out of balance again. Well, another example of um, of uh, w- weirdness as opposed to consistent right. or predictable change. Um, That's right, and I, and I think you know these are these are very tantalizing studies. But they're just just outside the accuracy in terms of time uh, and height change that we need to be able some, to say something about the hundred year time scale. Right. There's still really a few thousand years it goes up by a few meters, a few thousand years it goes down by a few meters. Um, how fast did this really happen? That's the big question. And I'm I'm told that there are actually uh, efforts to find. Um, salt marshes uh, dating back to the Eemian, where they could actually uh, do much finer chronologies of yeah. uh, of just how sea level changed. Uh, but I think that's all work in in progress and work in the future. And it'll really be interesting to see, you know, whether there were uh, uh, changes in uh, the past warm periods uh, that could drive meters of sea level rise, uh, and and how quickly that could happen. You know, one one other message from that work is that the the overall rate on the multi thousand year time scale is is not one of these uber catastrophes. It's kind of a meter a century or so. It, it's sort of at the high end of the IPCC projections, but not not at this the kind of some of the caricatured uh, projections that have been floated around. And I, but at the same time, right? We don't know. In the centuries through that millennium or two or three, uh, how much variability there could be, and that, so again, it leaves everybody with this ugly mix of long-term certainty and short-term murkiness. Right, right, right. Is it a is it a step or a, a gentle easing into a world of new sea level? Uh, that's the that's the million-dollar question right now, or I guess trillion-dollar question. Yeah, it, when you really start to tally up uh, costs of either action or impacts. Thank you.